Hello and welcome to News 9. I am Mr. Thayan First up, UP appointed governors seem to be in trouble in a move that can be termed a tit for tat policy. NDA has planned to remove a few governors, even as two have already stepped down. UPA did it in 2004. Now, NDA is doing it in 2014. Soon after coming to power in 2004, the UPA government removed most of the NDA appointed governors. Now, after a decade, NDA is giving a return gift to UPA. I think they should have resigned on their own the day the mandate came because most of these people are, all of these people are appointed because they went and sat in Sonia Gandhi's Darbar and propositioned her. There's no question of any of them coming on merit, so they must resign. On 19th May itself, News 9 had reported that most of the governors were going to hand in their resignations. And now, more than a fortnight later, two governors have already stepped down amid speculations that more might follow suit. Uttar Pradesh Governor B.L. Joshi sent his resignation papers to the PMO this afternoon. Some rumours were doing the rounds that the Karnataka governor too had tendered his resignation as he had gone to meet the president today. But he refuted all the rumours. It is the government which decided, not the governors. We have not told anyone, so we are our 29th tarikh. Our Prime Minister will talk about our conversation tomorrow. Government has choices. They can talk to Home Secretary or Home Minister. But we are entitled to certain courtesies, which we are getting. And there is no reason for me to speak to you something contrary. Congress went on to call this move by the Modi government a witch hunt. This is a kind of witch hunting. Why, why do they go for this kind of sort of uh, fight? And uh, we will take a decision whether our governor, governor sh should resign or not. Governors ka or sabhi commissions ke a fixed tenure hota hai. Aur mein sushti hu sarkaro ko, un logo ko tenure pura karne ka mauka dena chahi. After 2004, the matter is settled legally and it is decided and settled law is that governors are constitutional heads and because there is a change in government, governor should not resign or should not ask to go. Meanwhile, sources have indicated that the Modi government has some more names up its sleeve. Sheila Dixit, Governor of Kerala. M.K. Narayanan, Governor of West Bengal. Margaret Alva, Governor of Rajasthan. Kamla Beniwal, Governor of Gujarat. K. Sankara Narayanan, Governor of Maharashtra, Devendra Konwar, Governor of Tripura. Sources say that these governors could either be asked to resign or be transferred to smaller states. Kerala Governor Sheila Dixit refused to comment on the issue, but she did make it clear that anything of the sort should be given to her in writing. When can a governor be removed? You can't remove a governor only because he is out of sync with the uh, present government at the center. Governors can be removed only for a valid reason. Valid as well as a compelling reason. The Supreme Court has given a few examples and they have held that the mental or physical incapacity is a valid reason for removal. The corruption, serious allegations of corruption against a governor may be a valid reason for its removal so that they can be tried under the law. A major political tension could erupt if the Congress-appointed governors are removed before their tenure ends. Why the sudden move by NDA? Sources have said that the NDA is trying to appease many senior leaders who missed out on contesting in the recent Lok Sabha elections. Some even say that the Modi Sarkar already has a list of the probable governors. Murli Manohar Joshi, P.C. Kanduri, K. Srinath Tripathi, Kalyan Singh, Lalji Tandon, Shanta Kumar, V.K. Malhotra. In 2004, the UPA had removed Uttar Pradesh Governor Vishnu Khan Shastri, Gujarat Governor Kailash Pati Mishra, Haryana Governor Babu Parmanand, and the Goa Governor Kedarnath Saini. And this move by the NDA seems to be tit for tat. A News 9 report.
And well, it's not just health issues that Ambarish has to tackle. The housing minister finds himself in the midst of an illegal land dealing scam as well. Ambarish was allotted a 50 by 80 site in 1986 by Mysore Urban Development Authority. Later in 1987, he was allotted another site by BDA measuring 122 by 80 for less than a lakh rupees. <laughs> According to the 1991 Karnataka Development Authorities Act, a person cannot be allotted two sites by two urban development authorities. But Housing Minister Ambrish has not one or two but three sites in Mandya, Mysore and Bengaluru all allotted by the respective development authorities mandya nagara pradhikaradalli prathama barige sigakandanta amrish avara eno nivechana anchike matte koop nagara mysurali matte matte jp nagaradalli agirtakkantadu igagle nortta idive sarvajanikara avaru bage aparavadanta namkeyana ittkondidre yakendre nijivundalli amrish yav tara idare adhe tara cinema dallu maadidare cinema dalli irttakkanta amrish avaru nijivundalli kaandlilla antakkantaddu jille jantiyana kaadta iruvanta ondu prashne agide Despite so much happening, Ambrish is not bothered to react to any of the allegations levelled against him. Will Ambi react at least now or will he wait for more controversies to brew? Ravi Lalipalya for News 9 Mandya. And well, Kaveri issue has been raked up again by Sidhu Sar and now he is pointing figures at Amma for the issue being blown out of proportion. Take a look. CM Sar is willing to talk to Amma. But is Amma being adamant? Tension over the Kaveri issue has been escalating by the day. Time and again, the Kaveri issue has troubled governments, the latest being Sidhu's cabinet in the state. But now Sidramaya has gone on to blame his Tamil Nadu counterpart for the mess. He has gone on to allege that Amma is reluctant to find a solution. Even as Jayalalitha is pushing for the formation of the Kaveri management board, Sidramaya has expressed his opposition to it. The Amma government had also in the past said that Sidhu has no rationale in opposing the constitution of the board. Though the issue is in the Supreme Court, CM Sar has now expressed confidence about the verdict being in Karnataka's favour. Though the Karnataka government has claimed that it has adequate water supply as of now, with the Med Department forecasting a possible drought, the state seems to be treading on cautious path. Sidramaya has also gone on to allege that the issue is blown out of proportion only during Jayalalitha's tenure as chief minister. So with the centre wedged between both the states, which way will the verdict sway? Will Amma give in to holding talks with CM Sar? Sukesh for News 9, Bengaluru. Well, Mandur will be like any other village in Karnataka in just five months, according to the Chief Minister. But will it actually happen is the big question. Garbage dumping in Mandur to stop immediately. A cleaner and healthier Mandur in five months. In a meeting with the Reswami and representatives of the village at his residence today, Chief Minister Sidramaya assured that garbage will not enter Mandur henceforth. In addition to this, he has also stated that the landfills will be cleared and the villagers will get their homes back. The minister has also agreed to give it in writing.
but this is not the first time. Former Chief Minister Jagdish Shetta too had promised to rid Mandur of its garbage within a period of one year. Well, it was clearly not done. To avoid a similar situation this time around, the people of Mandur have put forth a few demands. Matu Corporation Matu, you were a decretal. Mukemantrika decretal, Sabena di Beko, Progress Yena Gidana, Gilsbek, Pretty Tingle, Matu Yamba, Yerad Tingle Munche, and then Maudi, Yerad Tingle Munche, Yamba two per cent Kelsa Agirbeko. Ido now Sharat Hakido. The officials have been asked to review the current situation in Mandur and start working on it immediately. Garbage in the existing landfills in Mandur will be covered with soil. This will be done to suppress the overpowering stench. Deep trenches around the landfills will be dug out to prevent the slush from contaminating water sources in the village. Though Paliki is allowed to dump garbage here, it will only be permissible between 10 in the night to 5 in the morning and it will altogether stop by December 1st. To prevent additional load, the garbage from Devanahalli and Hoskote will not be dumped in Mandur. The contract given to Gayatri Srinivas company will be reviewed. The work of every officer involved in the project will be closely monitored and the monthly meetings will be chaired by the chief minister himself. The condition put forth by the people of Mandur is that 80% of their job be completed in the first three months itself. The first step will be to cover the garbage with soil. Then waste segregation will be taken up and garbage will not be dumped here henceforth. The Indian Institute of Science is expected to provide technical know-how to solve the issue faster. Solid waste apart, another major concern would be to tackle the water contamination issue. Following CM's assurance, the residents of Mandur have decided to go easy on the government for now. A News 9 report.